with women, if we have low progesterone, low progesterone, low estrogen, those hormones are also very anabolic and they are very important for hair growth. That's why any woman who's gotten pregnant, right? When you're pregnant, you have HCG being secreted by that placenta and you're going to have lots of progesterone and women will tell you their hair was the thickest and the best during pregnancy. And then that six months afterwards or so, it starts to, to thin out and fall back because progesterone and hormones, progesterone and estrogen are important for hair growth. And many women are actually estrogen dominant or maybe even lower progesterone. So they're not going to have that good hair. As a woman goes into perimenopause and they have less production of hormones because their ovarian reserve is dropping, they're getting less output from their ovaries. Well, that's another player that plays in here. Now with guys too, testosterone, if you increase your testosterone, let's say via steroids or a bioidentical T and you do too much, some of that T can go downstream to DHT. So you can actually increase hair loss with men. If you're doing things like gear or T or things like that, it can definitely have an impact on raising your DHT and increasing hair loss on that side of the fence. There's some herbs and compounds that we'll use to reduce DHT naturally. Women don't have to worry about DHT as much, but they may if they have PCOS. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is usually going to be found in women that have high levels of insulin, right? The main drug to reduce PCOS in women is metformin or glucophage, which is an insulin sensitizing compound that reduces insulin. Insulin stimulates the 1720 lyase enzyme to then increase, cause conversion of uh, your estrogens to testosterone. And so getting insulin down is a big thing. But if women have that high testosterone, guess what? They can actually make DHT and that can cause hair growth on them. And it could also cause some hair loss over time. Um, so that's a big thing too. And if you have a lot of cortisol or stress issues, every time you get stressed, you can mobilize a Snickers bar, about 30 grams of glucose when you're chronically stressed in, in acute, you know, fashions, you can mobilize a Snickers bar of glucose. And if you're really sedentary and you're already very insulin sensitive or resistant, then that's going to cause more problems too. So we have cortisol, that stress hormone. Cortisol is also, if it's chronically elevated, it's very catabolic. It breaks down tissue and the tissue it's going to go after is protein muscle and skin and hair. So chronic cortisol, chronic issues there can impact the hair, cause wrinkles, cause collagen elasticity issues and cause hair breakdown. 